Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations here to talk about balanced versus unbalanced antenna systems and transmission lines. Well, let's start with transmission lines. Let's focus on just the transmission line or also known as the feed line which connects your transmitter or receiver or transceiver to your antenna. Let's just call it a transceiver because that's what most amateur radio operators have. This is the simplistic diagram of this system an antenna and your transmission line also sometimes called the feed line. <clears throat> well there are various types of feed lines available for amateur radio use. Most of them uh, these days are commercially manufactured. You can still <clears throat> roll your own at home if you're willing to go to the trouble necessary to fabricate your own line. But the most common type of transmission line probably used these days is coaxial cable. Just uh, more or less like the cable that you find in a cable television uh, arrangement or uh, the cable that you find between the antenna and your digital box in a satellite television system. The antenna actually has a uh, transponder. Well, not a transponder. It's a uh, kind of like a transmitter receiver unit uh, in it, if you, especially if you have a satellite internet connection. That's, that's uh, something worth a video in and of itself, is satellite internet. Uh, that stuff uh, is really, really interesting. It's also really, really frustrating. <laughs> For those of you who have it, you know what I mean by now, no doubt. But <clears throat> coaxial cable is, uh, as the term coaxial means that the two conductors in that cable share the same axis. Basically, a coaxial cable, let's look at a cross-section of a coaxial cable. It has an outer conductor, which is shaped like a long cylinder or braid of wire uh, uh, fabricated into kind of a long, long tube. And that's the outer conductor. also known as the shield because it is normally connected to ground and serves to keep RF in or out of the interior region inside of there. It's almost like one great big Faraday cage. <clears throat> then you have a center conductor, which is a length of wire, which can range anywhere from about AWG number 22 to AWG number 12 or even number 10. That center conductor is kept in the center by a by polyethylene plastic. Usually, in the best cables, it's a foamed polyethylene plastic known as the dielectric. Dielectric means two poles or, or two electrical opposites, which separates these two electrical conductors and keeps them from shorting out to each other and also helps to propagate the electromagnetic field 
down the length of that line. Well, we call this an unbalanced transmission line, <clears throat> also known as an asymmetrical line. That would be a better word to use. Asymmetrical because the two conductors that uh, carry the electromagnetic field are much different in terms of their geometry and in terms of their geometrical positions. This is not a symmetrical system by any means. I'll show you what I mean by a symmetrical system in just a minute. That's why unbalanced is probably not the best best word to use because it's not really unbalanced. It's more like not balanced. <laughs> okay, Because the current in the center conductor is what really carries the signal. And ideally, this grounded shield doesn't carry any current at all. So it's like a lopsided or asymmetrical type of geometry. Now, the other type of transmission line that you will commonly find in amateur radio is called ladder line or parallel wire line and if we look at a cross section of that we find that it's just two long pieces of wire separated at intervals by these little sticks usually made out of solid plastic sticks or they might be separated by a solid polyethylene ribbon. In some older lines these two wires were actually molded into opposite sides of a long cylinder of polyethylene. That was called tubular line but the two conductors <coughs> carry the signal. One of them carries a current in one direction and the other one carries a current in the exact opposite direction under ideal circumstances. The intensity of that current depends upon where you are in the transmission line with respect to the antenna and the transmitter in terms of the wavelength. But generally speaking, at any given point, the current in one of these wires flows in exactly the opposite direction from the current in the other wire and the intensities are the same so that they balance each other out at every point along the line. If you were to look at this line from the side, let's just look at a common type of transmission line, well a particularly popular transmission line amongst certain amateur radio operators, myself included. So-called ladder line. Two wires separated at intervals by these plastic spacers. Anywhere from about one and a half to three or even four centimeters apart. At any given point on this line the current in one direction, or in one wire, flows in exactly the opposite direction from the current in the other wire, and the intensities are the same, so that the electromagnetic field that propagates along this wire, suppose your transmitter is at this end, and your antenna is at that end, then the electromagnetic field propagates from left to right along this line to get from the transmitter to the antenna. But it remains in the immediate vicinity of that line because the electromagnetic field from the top wire and the electromagnetic field from the bottom wire exactly cancel each other out in phase so that at every point in space 
more than a few centimeters from this wire, they cancel out and you get nothing. That is how the electromagnetic field remains confined to a parallel wire line and we call this a balanced line or a symmetrical line for intuitively apparent reasons. It's geometrically symmetrical. It balances at every point. They're the same. The, the two wires do exactly the same thing in just exactly the opposite direction. But when this electromagnetic field here gets to the antenna, the antenna is deliberately designed not to cancel out the electromagnetic fields, but instead to radiate those fields into space. And that is why a balanced transmission line works. That said, this has to be the right type of antenna. Generally speaking, an unbalanced transmission line like coaxial cable should be used with an unbalanced antenna system, such as a vertical or a ground plane, whereas a balanced transmission line should be used with a balanced transmission or uh, balanced antenna such as a center fed half wave dipole i hope that clears this um, business about balanced and unbalanced up a little bit for you in regards to transmission lines stangibilisco w1gv signing off for now 73 and so long